Hello, all you happy innovators. How you guys doing today, huh? How you doing? It's been a little while, but like I promised in the last episode of the Singularity Podcast, I told you it wouldn't be too much longer before I'd give you another one, even though I'm busy doing all this other stuff. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today, give you something to listen to while you're working or doing whatever it is you're doing. Okay. So, um, you know, I have so many different things that I want to talk about, like on any given episode. And I have to really kind of try to narrow it down sometimes. And in the case of this particular episode, you know, I wanted to talk about, okay, the concept of time. And there's so many different things that I can talk about. So if I'm going to talk about the concept of time, okay, this is where I should probably start. Um, my wife and I lately have been watching a lot of science fiction movies. Okay, so that's kind of like, a, I don't know, a season. We're in like in our season of sci-fi, you know. We don't watch it all the time. We don't like it all the time. But we'll go through a period of time where we'll be tuned into it, you know? And one of the things that I've noticed uh, recently, okay, is that inside the genre of sci-fi, okay, there's like a sub-genre of time travel, okay? Now, I had no idea about this until I just discovered it maybe a couple weeks ago, okay? But there's this whole sub-genre devoted to time travel and there are enough people interested in this concept of time travel that it has its own sub-genre so there's just movie after movie after movie of time travel themed films apparently it's something that matters a great deal to people you know this concept of traveling through time and it's really, you know, as far as, you know, a thought experiment or something, the concept of time travel is probably one of the best you can do. I mean, there's just so many possibilities and so many questions about something like that, right? And um, I suppose that I kind of found myself asking a few of them. You know, and we checked out a few of these movies and probably more than a few. And they were all really good and interesting and all that. But it just really kind of set me off into this spiral of like thinking about this. OK, and um, this concept of time and what it must mean to people. And I know I suppose maybe one of the questions was, what does time mean to me? OK. And uh, without going you know, too far down the Mike Bostwick rabbit hole or whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, um, I would say this when it comes to time, there's a couple of thoughts I have on this. And one of the things that I think about is that the older I get, the faster time seems to go by. You know, I know a lot of people say that. Okay. It's, it's something that I've heard before, but I don't think that people express it enough. Okay. It's talked about, it's mentioned, you know, throughout your life or whatever, you'll have your uncles or your grandparents or somebody older than you, you know, making some kind of comment about time. But when I think about this concept of time, okay, um, time goes by so fast. And it goes by faster the older I get. Do you feel the same way? I kind of wonder, you know, is it like a universal thing where it's just maybe um, I'm not sure why. OK, I guess that's something we can talk about in a minute. But I mean, the reasons why time seems to go by faster as you get older, I'm sure that there is a logical explanation for that. You know, maybe it's like uh so we're so used to the 24 hour cycle in our lives that the more we do it, the faster it seems to go by. That could be one possibility, right? But um, time is also strange to me 
from my perspective because when I look back on my life, it seems like there were these chunks. They're almost like separate lives to me in my memory. Like, it's kind of hard to believe it was me, you know, back in 1983. You know, when I think about that time period, you know, um, it's just kind of hard to believe it's, it, sometimes. You know, when I remember something that happened 30 years ago, it's as if it were happening to someone else and it was a, a movie I watched or something, you know? Something like that, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Do you follow that kind of thinking? Uh, maybe you agree, too, you know? Um, and I suppose the success of something like Facebook or these these places that give you the opportunity to go back and find the people from your past and and see what they're doing now you know there's that probably speaks to what i'm talking about which is this you know this memory these memories and these things that are part of our lives but they happened so long ago in another time and it's probably exacerbated Okay, this whole idea by the fact that I was born at a time, um, I was born in 1971. Okay, so I was born at a time when uh, we still had vinyl and 8-track players and television, a lot of black and white television, really, you know. Um, Politics was different. The landscape of the world was different. And, you know, as I got older... Of course, new things were introduced like compact discs, the digital age, um, the age of technology began. And I was kind of right on the cusp of all that. So I have a memory of the old way and I'm adapting to the new way. And that has a tendency to kind of like amaze me, I guess is probably the best way I could put it, that And I kind of consider myself to be fortunate to have been born at that time and watched everything evolve and watched everything change in a relatively short period of time. Because we're only talking about 40 years or so. You know, I'm 47 years old now. So, you know, I guess maybe pushing 50 years. So a lot has changed in that 50 years. I mean, it's almost as if the world of my youth and the world of my adulthood are completely different in a lot of ways. I mean, people say, you know, the more things change, the more things stay the same. But uh, I would say that my generation really in particular has kind of ridden the wave of this change differently than probably most other generations have, you know. I was young enough to be introduced to the new things, but old enough to remember the old things, like eight track cassette players and those kinds of things, you know? Um, So the passing of time is just so strange to me. Uh, Sometimes when I think about, you know, something happening in my past or somewhere I went or somebody that I knew, and I realized that it was 30 years ago, the last time I saw their face, or the last time I talked to them, or whatever. It's just shocking to me. You know, I would imagine I'm probably not alone in that kind of thinking. But, you know, basically what it all boils down to, all of the stuff that I've talked about, you know, what it all boils down to is um, this idea that the concept of time is something that matters a great deal apparently to a lot of people all right now you know you start getting into this whole time travel thing okay and you, you know naturally one you know moves over to youtube okay and starts digging through all the different videos about time travel and yeah i know a lot of it seems really far fetched and a lot of it really seems you know impossible and you know, it's fiction, it's lies, it's not real. People can't really travel through time. And, 
you know, that's where the logical side of my brain goes. But as you probably realize by now, there's a whole separate part of me that really embraces the unknown and the supernatural and things that are fascinating, you know, things that are, uh, yeah, they're considered impossible, but maybe they're possible. You know, maybe they are. And, you know, I don't rule it out, you know, and I like to entertain the thoughts like that, you know, things that seem impossible, but maybe they're not. What if they're not? Like, what if they are not impossible? What if it is possible? Okay, that somebody can travel through time. And wow, can you imagine anything more interesting than that? Well, there's a whole army of people, you know, a whole slice of the collective human pie, you know, uh, in the world that believe in time travel and believe that it happens and believe that it's possible or whatever. And Apparently, there's been a whole lot of time travel <laughs> going on for the past, you know, 30 or 50 years or whatever. Like, uh, you know, apparently, okay, time travel has happened. And, uh, you know, there's a zillion billion videos about it. And, you know, <laughs> you got to kind of laugh about something like that. But at the same time, you have to, in some ways, take it seriously. Like, let's sit down for a moment and just kind of contemplate this idea that time travel may actually be possible. Now, one of the main reasons why I would argue that time travel may be possible, okay, is because it is a fact, okay, that Nikola Tesla, who's probably, you know, probably the most important, the most significant inventor scientist ever okay he's probably if he's not the most he's one of the most important okay and if you don't know who nikola tesla is then i would suggest that you you know google him and you look him up he's worth learning about but um i've always had a fascination with tesla you know since i was a little kid mostly because you know he was able to make lightning come out of his body <laughs> that was crazy and uh, I've always had a fascination with lightning I just think it's fascinating to watch it and to hear it and just the whole thing the the science behind lightning you know and here was this guy Nikola Tesla who had for the most part harnessed this kind of power and he was able to play with it and to manipulate it and I think that that's pretty fascinating, okay? Well, it is a fact that Nikola Tesla had claimed, okay, that he had started to make serious breakthroughs with this concept of time travel. And, um, you know, I guess the story starts there. You know, the story of modern day time travel starts in the laboratory of Nikola Tesla and in his notebooks and in his research that he did and his experiments, okay? But what I find really interesting, okay? And this is just, okay, this is just speculation and this is certainly not an original thought, okay? These are not original ideas. I, I have heard them from other people first, but there's this thing going around, okay, let's say on the internet, um, on YouTube in particular, um, there's a group of people that really believe or claim that uh, Donald Trump, okay, the current president of the United States, is actually a time traveler. And when you <laughs> when you hear that at first, well, one, you know, you roll your eyes because you're like, ah, oh, like another outrageous story about Donald Trump, you know, just another outrageous story. But when you look into it a little bit, okay, it is actually a pretty fascinating and pretty weird story, 
okay? And one that cannot be immediately discounted as false, at least as far as I'm concerned, okay? Um, <laughs> pretty interesting, okay? So here it goes. Here's the story that I'm getting at here. Um, okay, I already mentioned to you that Nikola Tesla had made the claim that he had started to get his head around the idea of time travel, that he had started to figure out a way to make a dual singularity machine that would allow you to go through a portal into the past or into the future. Okay. Um, but then, unfortunately, Nikola Tesla died. Okay. Now, here's where the story gets pretty weird. Okay. Um, when Nikola Tesla died, all of his instruments, all of his notebooks, all of the research that he had done, everything that he had done, all of his scientific data and instrumentation, everything from his laboratory was seized by the U.S. government. Okay. And the U.S. government, once in possession of all of this data and information and these notebooks and files and instruments that he had made, they needed somebody who was smart enough to step in and be able to interpret all that he had left behind. Okay. And the person that they chose to do this was Donald Trump's uncle. And this is a fact. You can look it up. Okay. Um, what an odd coincidence, you know, that the one person who had access to all of the findings from Nikola Tesla you know, post-mortem, right, uh, was Donald Trump's uncle, the brother of his father. And Donald Trump has talked about his uncle before. I mean, apparently his uncle was an extremely intelligent, highly educated, highly renowned scientist, okay? Obviously enough to be selected to be the person who would take the findings of Nikola Tesla and interpret them to a new group of people. So think about that. Just stop for a moment and just think about that, okay? What a rare and amazing opportunity, okay, to be the person who was selected to do that. And, you know, as we know now, it's kind of, kind of interesting, right? That it just so happens, okay, that Donald Trump is probably one of the most amazing characters in United States history, especially at this point, okay? I mean, this is a guy who has, man, you know, what a life, what a life, right? I mean, think about it. I mean, how much money he made and uh, he was famous for being rich. He had so much money and so much power that he was famous for that alone, okay? Think about that. It's crazy. It's, it's just so highly unusual. And, um, you know, of course, now he's been elected president of the United States, and he has been for a couple of years. So there's all this, you know, um, all of this exploration into his past and into his history, you know, on a massive scale because he's just such a heavily scrutinized person. Okay. And the more you see of that, um, the more you kind of realize that Donald Trump has always been present in the zeitgeist. He's, he has always been around, you know, doing something, making cameos in oh, so many movies, you know, so many really famous movies. And, uh, of course, his first marriage was, you know, they were celebrities just for being who they were. 
They didn't have to do anything other than be wealthy and be charismatic or whatever. That was enough to propel them into celebrity. Okay. And they stayed there. Okay. That's another thing to consider. I mean, think about how many celebrities come and go, the rise and fall of different celebrities. That didn't happen for Donald Trump. You know, and, you know, we know now, of course, he had his hands into politics. Of course, we know now he was making a lot of campaign contributions to both Democrats and Republicans alike. You know, Uh, he had a hit TV show. I mean, just this incredible life, Uh, you know, hotels with his name stamped on them all over the world. You know, Uh, quite an amazing character, despite what you might think of his politics or whatever because I don't care at all about that. Um, You can't deny the amazing level of fame that this man has risen to, you know. President of the United States is just another thing on his resume, you know. He's had this incredibly amazing life. Um, So, You know, it makes me kind of ask the question, is it possible, okay, is it possible that there is some kind of connection to the level of success that Donald Trump has attained and the fact that his uncle was the person who was given access and had the knowledge and capability and skill set to interpret the works of Nikola Tesla. Is there a a connection there? Okay. (laughs) When you really think about it, it's not so wild. Okay. It's not such a wild idea. This possibility of Donald Trump being able to travel through time or uh, you know, someone he knows being able to travel through time. Okay. It's pretty fascinating, a pretty fascinating thing. And yeah, you know, it's very imagestic and, you know, entertaining and, you know, cinematic and, you know, the story, you know, I'll admit that. But When you consider the realities of Nikola Tesla and what he was doing, what he was able to invent, and all the numerous things he discovered, and you marry that to this idea that this very close relative of Donald Trump was the only person who was qualified to access that information and be able to interpret it, isn't it just a stunning coincidence that his nephew winds up becoming one of the wealthiest people probably in human history. And, you know, forget about the wealth. Let's just talk about the power, you know, that this person has wielded. I mean, it could be argued that he could wield more power before he was president. You know, that that could probably be argued that uh, taking on the presidency was... uh, He had to put a couple things aside to become president. You know, that's that's possible. Although it's probably not likely. It's probably like, you know, to be the president of the United States, to be the leader of the free world. Wow, that's a lot of power, you know. So I have been entertaining this concept, this idea that Donald Trump is actually a time traveler. And it certainly would explain a lot of things, at least, you know, to me it would, okay, in my imagination. And uh, I don't know, maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But if you look into the facts of these different things that I was talking to you about today uh, in regards to Nikola Tesla, Donald Trump and his uncle, it's all factual. Okay, it's factual information. Donald Trump has even expressed, you know, with his own mouth that, you know, uh, his uncle was a very powerful uh, scientist. You know, he was a very knowledgeable and notable scientist. So 
I don't know. Think about the concept of time and traveling through time. You know, like if you could, if you could travel through time, would you want to go forward or backward? You know, and how far forward or how far backward? It's pretty amazing to think about. You know, and it ties into all of this Mandela effect thing that I've talked about before in another Singularity podcast. Um, This idea that the space-time continuum uh, has been manipulated somehow and that we, you know, experience small glitches in our culture Things that were once one way are now a slightly different version of what they used to be. You know, like the Ford logo changing or, you know, Bernstein bears instead of Bernstein bears. And, you know, just small little changes like that um, as a result of someone having, you know, affected time, you know, as we know it. (laughs) It's pretty tripped out pretty heavy thinking but entertaining nonetheless right and certainly something you can ask yourself like I do you know uh, from time to time and, and examine it you know pretty pretty amazing stuff but speaking of time I, I should probably get going here I have a lot of stuff I have to do today but um, don't worry folks I'll be handing off something to you uh, before too long. Um, I promise you, I won't make you wait too long for another singularity. Anyway, for now, this is Mike Bostwick from Pipe Choir Records signing off. And remember, folks, if you want to keep what you've got, you've got to give it away. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>